Hi, my name is Leilani, and today we are gonna talk about science. We're gonna talk about science, and I have a lot of science homeschool curriculum sitting over here. And you're probably wondering why do I have a lot of science homeschool curriculum sitting over here? That's because, and I'll tell you in a second. This is something that has been weighing so heavy on my heart lately that I just, I just wanted to talk about it. And plus, we all know that a lot of those kids with sensory processing disorder, ADHD, like any, anything, well, just all our kids in general, we wanna get our hands messy. They wanna get, well, they might not wanna get their hands messy, but they might. They might wanna get their hands messy, digging around in dirt and, and playing with the science stuff, because science is, it's a fun, 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 fun subject to talk about. I have everything from Apologia to Answers in Genesis slash Master Books. I have Gather Round. I have some Independent. I do have some Usborne books in here as well as a game that I'll talk about a little bit later at the end of the video. So make sure you wait till the end of the video to see that cool game. It's a cool game. So I'll share it with you. I did mention that I am a former public and private school teacher. 10 years. 10 years I was in the school system. It's 10 years too long. But when I decided to resign from the public school system, I was so drawn to the homeschool movement. I knew I was gonna homeschool my kids. They were not yet in school, but I first started teaching and I'm still teaching there. I am teaching at a Christian homeschool co-op where I am their upper elementary slash middle school science teacher. And one of the things that I wanted to do when I entered into this tutoring slash teaching type position I wanted to teach from a biblical worldview, which has been very hard. It's been a journey because I was raised as a public school kid in the secular school system. So I'm gonna share with you my journey, things that I have found that have answered questions for me, but also for my kids, because my kids, I seriously had a conversation with my son about time dilation, and he's 10. So first I'm gonna start with apology, and apology was the first thing that was recommended to me when I started teaching at the homeschool co-op. And I have taught all of the exploring creation curriculum twice, with the exception of the earth science one. Now, when you teach from Apologia, a lot of it says that you can teach to all the kids, but the reality is it is it does kind of go in an order, starting with astronomy, botany, flying creatures, zoology, that's the zoology one, then marine science, zoology, swimming creatures, zoology two, land animals, zoology three, and then the human anatomy, and then the chemistry and physics comes after that. I don't know where the earth science fits into the mix because I, I haven't taught that one. All of the Apologia books come with a journal that you could purchase. They do have one for the younger kids and one for the upper elementary kids. The biggest difference with those is some of the, um, the older ones may have crossword puzzles where the younger ones don't, cursive in the older ones, print in the younger ones. But the journals are great and like I said I've been homeschooling my kids too so even though I didn't use the journals in the classroom when I was teaching at the co-op I did the journals with my kids. But the journals are great and I love them because they give you a lot of extra resources that you can go digging into. And when I teach, me personally, I'm always digging into extra resources because I feel like the curriculum is always never enough. We're always wanting to find more, dig deeper, ask questions. My kids have lots of questions. <laughs> like most of our kids, I mean, what kid doesn't have questions, right? So for example, this is the flying creatures curriculum. You know, they'll have like draw 50 birds, how to draw birds, bird calls, backyard bird song. This is, if you love birds, you're gonna love this one. Oh, they also have some extra experiments inside of these journals. So it's great, but you don't have to get them. I do have a video, by the way, side note, I do have a video where I compare answers in Genesis with Apologia, I give you a flip through, I give you the pluses and minuses of them so you can kind of decide what's gonna work best for you. So when I say to you that they go in that order, you're gonna notice that the astronomy, now I use the older edition of astronomy, but after talking to some of my friends, they say that the older edition is very similar to the newer edition, it's just a little updated. But the astronomy, from my experience, was geared towards a kindergarten first grader. Now I am extremely passionate about astronomy. I'm not gonna lie. It's always been my favorite science. Well, not always been. I did like zoology for a while. I went through a phase, but I just felt as my kids got older and as I taught it at the co-op, it just wasn't enough. So that's where these books came in. So first stop, first stop, Answers in Genesis. So I picked up these books and this 
master books by the way has the same curriculum from what i understand it's just all in one book see the answers in genesis has three plus the teacher's manual master books it's all in one book and it's an updated version that's really the only difference but this is the one from answers in genesis it is an older edition because i'm old they have four sets of these so i i purchased this one this one has our planet earth our weather and water and then our universe right here they were it was good we went through it and i still wanted more because and my kids wanted more. With Apologia, it was so heavily focused on the animals and the human body that I was so upset that they weren't touching on the astronomy stuff. So here I am on my mission. I looked at Answers in Genesis. I was happy with it, but I, I needed more. And that's what I found this. So we use this book at the homeschool co-op. This is the Stargazer's Guide to the Night Sky. It has a teacher's manual and I also have this book, which I think just the title speaks for itself, right? I, I, it's the best title ever, Taking Back Astronomy. And man, I'm gonna tell you that title just popped out at me and I was like, we are reading this book now. And this book is so beautiful. We are actually reading it for a second time. And when I taught the class, what we used to do is the kids had to read through this book and they would journal. And at one point I had them write an essay on one of the topics in this book. I had an atheist in the class. <laughs> and I told him, I told him over and over again, I'm coming from a biblical worldview, I just want you to know that. And he always said it was okay. So it was always really fun reading his stuff, but he read this book. He read this book, and he read this book. I hope he liked it. <laughs> I did. But I love this book, because I feel like every single page finds a way to glorify God. It's written by Dr. Jason Lyle. In my opinion, this is definitely written for middle school and high school and even adults. I would even say that it's a coffee table book, but we all know coffee table books never get read, so I'm not gonna call it that. I'm just gonna say it's a book that just needs to come everywhere with you. My son actually for a really long time kept it in his bed because he fell asleep reading to it. Not that it was boring, he just really, he loved reading it. And he would, he actually has a window and he would spend a lot of time looking at the stars. We actually got him a telescope this year and we did some telescoping. I don't know if that's what it's called. I just made up that word, telescoping. We did, and guess who got to set up the telescope most of the time? It takes a lot of patience, but I loved it. All of these things will be down in the description box below if you're curious about any of these that I've talked about so far. This is the master books version of Answers in Genesis. It's the property. Properties of matter, properties of atoms and molecules. I actually taught this at the homeschool co-op and it was, they actually will color code them according to grade. And so that's really helpful if you're going to be doing several grades at the same time and, uh, or doing it in a repetition cycle. Cause I know some people will go back and redo it when the kids are older, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. It's a great curriculum. I've never really been disappointed with Answers in Genesis when it comes to the material that they put out for science and even the apologetics type stuff that I've come in contact with. I actually, years ago, had a five-year subscription to their magazine and I read it while I was feeding a baby, but I kept all of them specifically for my kids when they got older. And so now with my middle schoolers, what I've been doing is every single night, I pull out these old magazines and we pick an article and we read it together. Also at the homeschool co-op next year, I am teaching an animal class for the upper elementary kids. And I am going to be using these articles as kind of like a springboard into what we're doing in that class because it's focusing on the uniqueness of individual animals. I'm really excited because I'm gonna have fun with that one. Now I probably am gonna get another subscription to Answers in Genesis. It comes in quarterly and I don't know, I'd like to see some more up-to-date type stuff. I am looking at getting the Answers in Genesis TV, which is basically a streaming service for, for Answers in Genesis and we're probably gonna get it and, and binge watch it to get some some more stuff, more material from them. So I'm looking forward to that. We're gonna have lots of discussions. It's gonna be awesome. Even my husband's gonna get involved because he likes to come alongside and nerd with me on this. And, but it becomes a family affair is pretty much what happens. I want to start getting them exposed to that environment because that's an environment that mommy and daddy like. We love apologetics. 
We love science. We love these things coming from a biblical perspective. And I want my kids to be around that. I want them to ask questions and I want them to find answers. And that's why a lot of this stuff has answers that I'm sharing with you guys today. It's, it's always good to keep seeking, not just sticking with one curriculum, but going out there and asking questions and watching videos and going to conferences and watching lectures, like all these things and just coming alongside these people to just worship and glorify God. Because I mean, it's just, that's what we're here for, right? <laughs> So as a homeschool evaluator, I have noticed, I am going to go on a tangent here, okay, just bear with me, but I have noticed that some of the secular worldview is creeping into the homeschool movement via curriculum, via just the fact that, you know, that's how we were raised. Look, the one thing I love about homeschooling is that we have the freedom to choose how we want to homeschool our kids. I think it's beautiful. And for those of us that want to raise our kids from a biblical perspective, Great, then let's do it, okay? But sometimes because of lack of information, sometimes because just a lack of good quality curriculum out there, we find ourselves just letting some of that secularism seep in. Whether we're buying secular specific curriculum or just there's some really cool science curriculum out there that's not Christian based that just seems really cool and fun and hey, you know, let's make that our core science curriculum. But we're missing out on so much, like a lot. We're basically allowing that secular worldview to come into our homeschool when our original intent was to teach from a biblical worldview. But the only way to do that, especially if you're coming from a secular worldview, you're gonna have to work at it. And I've worked at it really hard and I'm still, I'm still digging. I'm digging and I'm digging deep because I want to make sure I'm laying a good foundation for my children and, and building my foundation even stronger. And even at the co-op, I care about those kids. Of course I care about those kids or I wouldn't be teaching there. I want to lay a good foundation for them too. That's the privilege that we have as homeschool parents. Oh, I forgot to mention gather round. So for one of the classes, I did do the gather round inventions. So gather round, we get on ebook. So it kind of looks like this beautiful, beautiful artwork. And like I said, there's always a prayer at the beginning, a prayer at the end. They talk about the Lord throughout the curriculum. The one thing I noticed with gather round that I struggled with is that it didn't go deep enough for my family. It was pretty, pretty surfacey and they, they, they made, there were a couple mistakes that I found within the curriculum. Not much, not much, because I'm still, I'm still probably going to use gather around curriculum. But like I said, it was a springboard to digging deeper. And so when I taught the gather around curriculum at the homeschool co-op, it was more of I'm teaching inventions and their inventors. It's based after the gather around curriculum. It's a fun class. It was a lot of work. It was a lot of work on my part, but it was really fun. And what's next? Oh, I have a lot of answers in Genesis stuff on my table. So I love these books. There's more than just four. I just only have four, but they're the answers books for kids. 20 questions for kids on creation in the fall, uh, kids on God in the Bible. And I, I know there's some more. So these are great, great resource. I know that both of my boys you know, went through all of these books on their own during their quiet prayer time. Amazing. I also have these books. I'm a step ahead of myself. Actually, no, somebody gave these to me and I have only one, two, and three. I believe they have, they have more. These are, these to me look like more high school and adult, but there are tons of questions and answers in here that I've referenced to a lot with my own seeking and searching kind of thing. So these are great books. This book's great too. I think almost everybody ends up getting this book when they get a packet of curriculum from something. Um, it's great, but you gotta read it. You can't just look at the pictures. You gotta read the stuff. The same is true with Taking Back Astronomy. You've gotta read it or you're not getting much out of it. You're just gonna look at the pretty pictures. So make it a point to read. This is one, I have a video on this actually. I'll link it down below. Not many people know about this one, but this is Nutrition, Choose Life from a Biblical Perspective. And it is very, um, it's very in depth. I'm going to tell you that much. You can teach it to all grade levels. I, I want to use the word crunchy. I just hope that it's not offensive to use it. It's crunchy in a good way. Let's say that 
because I know how meanings of words change through the years. So let's just say crunchy in a good way. Right now, crunchy to me is a positive term. But I did, I loved, I loved going through this book. That's actually one reason I didn't do apology and nutrition because I was so satisfied with this one. So nutrition 101, you can see like literally pages are falling out of this book. I do have some secular resources. This is one of them, the body book. I did this alongside human anatomy with Apologia. It was great because basically you're cutting and pasting out body parts. It was great, it was a great book. And it's just a supplement is what it is. So I also got some Usborne books and this is definitely from a secular evolution type perspective. And I was very hesitant to do that, but I did it anyway because because I like the pictures <laughs> and because there's a lot of good questions in there. Also, this was not our core curriculum. This was something that my kids kind of read for fun and it challenged them. It, they brought a lot of questions to the table and my sons were always like, oh, they're talking about million years, they're idiots. Like that's, that's probably not really nice to say, but they said that. That would, be a, that would be a teachable moment, teachable moment. We don't call people idiots at all. And because they're probably not idiots, there's a lot of really, really, really smart people out there that believe the earth is millions of years old. But I did, I did get these Usborne books for the kids. There are a few things in here that I thought were worth looking at. The human body. This one's fun uh, because, you know, we talk about the nervous system and blushing is only human. Your eyes are full of tears. Like just little fun science facts in here. Like I said, not my core curriculum, it's just a little fun, little extra thing, and it brought up a lot of really good questions. I do have apology as astronomy. This is this this was also part of my hunt for finding a good astronomy curriculum for my kids and for the homeschool co-op. I do have a flip through on this, but I'm gonna I'm just gonna be honest, it's definitely high school. Very you, you need to have a good st strong math background and quite frankly, if you're gonna do astronomy, you just stick with Jason Lyle's book, Dr. Jason Lyle. I'm gonna leave links to all of these. Oh, I forgot this one. This one I actually used in high school. It's a coloring book. I love these coloring books. Don't worry about reading it, just use the, the coloring page. Oh, and Answers in Genesis have these books. I love these books. There's one on zoology too. I cannot find it. I hope I didn't leave it somewhere, which I, I probably did because I, that's what I do. I love these books because, you know, they tell you what day it was created on, uh, design, it tells you about the design, the features, fun facts, and the classification. And it's so well organized with all the sea creatures. This is another Answers in Genesis resource. Love it. I, I did. I went over everything now. Everything's done. Everything's done. I did good, right? That's a lot. Just to wrap everything up, we've got Apologia, which is a great resource, especially if you're really wanting to dig into some zoology or human anatomy type stuff. You've also got Answers in Genesis, which is just a, a plethora of curriculum and resources and such. But if you want to delve more into astronomy and theology, Dr. Jason Lyle, he's got the Biblical Science Institute. You could go on his website. He has articles, answers in Genesis, has articles galore. And then of course, there's another one called Creation Ministry. It's international. I don't know much about them, but I'm starting to dip my toe into that. Once again, it's really hard to find good biblical curriculum out there for science that you can trust. It's hard because I'll be honest, I have lost a lot of trust in a lot of things. And don't be afraid to ask questions if something doesn't seem right and go straight to the Bible to find your answer. Check everything with the Bible. I always, you know, we always say that. You can't get lazy in these days. Oh, I forgot my game, my game. Have you ever played Sushi Go? It's Sushi Go with chemistry. <laughs> We used to play this when I taught chemistry at the co-op and even with my kids. It's sushi go with the table of elements and it's so much fun. And if you made it to the end of my video, thank you guys so much. I don't wanna stop here and I, I just wanna add that history is another one where it's so important to teach a biblical worldview and we use TruthQuest, and I have a video on that as well. If you wanna check it out, I'll go ahead and stick it in the description box, as well as around one of the boxes around my face. And of course, all the resources that I mentioned are in the description box below. Good luck to you guys. Let me know what you thought of this video, and until then, I will see you in my next video.
Bye.